Hi, I am Janaki Ghosh and welcome to my video on teaching calculus using GeoGebra. In this video, we are going to visualize the definite integral as the limit of sums. So first, I would like to take you to a PowerPoint slide uh, which describes what I wish to show you in this video. So GeoGebra helps to um, rather any graphing software which can do this would be able to illustrate mathematical ideas such as this uh, in pedagogically powerful geometric settings. So for example, if I have the graph of a function here and I wish to look at the area under this curve between two points. So for example, if this is the function and a cubic function and I would like to explore the area under the function from x is equal to minus 1 to x equal to 2. I can do it by uh, dividing the interval minus 1 to 2 into rectangles which approach the curve from below the curve and I can also do the same by dividing this interval into rectangles which approach the curve from above the curve. So the darker one that you see here represents what is known as the lower sum and the purple one which you see is known as the upper sum and we are going to manipulate these rectangles and visualize the area under the curve. So let us see how we can do this on GeoGebra. So I would like to now take you to a GeoGebra file. And uh, so I come to the graphics view. Uh, I don't really need the grid, so I'm going to remove the grid. And in the input bar, I'm going to input the function f of x is equal to minus x cubed plus 2x square plus 0.5x plus 1 and when I press enter uh, GeoGebra feeds this into the algebra window and I can see the graph as well. Uh, I would like to adjust the x and y axis so that I get a better view of this graph and maybe I'll just reduce the algebra window and now I would like to explore the area under this curve from minus 1 to 2 so I'm going to enter the two points say capital A which is which has coordinates minus 1 comma 0 and point B whose coordinates are 2 comma 0. So this marks the points between which I would like to explore the area under this curve. I'm now going to add a slider n. I'll enter n equal to 1 in the input bar and when I press enter it shows here as a number. But when I click on this white circle here the slider will become visible on the graphics view. I will right click and remove untick the fix object option and shift the slider to the right hand side so that it is more comfortable for me to handle the slider. And here n, the variable n is going to represent the number of rectangles uh, which I'm going to place under the curve between the points minus 1 to 2 on the x-axis. The number of rectangles cannot really be negative. So as you can see right now, the n values are varying from minus 5 to 5. So I'm going to adjust by right clicking on the slider, going to object properties and allowing the interval values of n to range from 1 to 50 with an increment of 1. Once this is done, I can close this window and now I'm going to enter what is called a function called the lower sum. I'm going to give the name lower sum and I'm going to now use the lower sum command so what is it that I wish to have the lower sum of? It is of the function f as x ranges from minus 1 to 2. Minus 1 happens to be the x coordinate of the point a so I'm going to type x of a comma x of b comma n because n will give define the number of rectangles 
When you do this, observe that one rectangle has been created because my n value is 1. And of course, this will increase as I drag my slider. But for now, I would like to remove this label. So I'm going to right click on lower sum here in the algebra window and untick show label. And I would also like to darken the rectangle by going to object properties and increasing the opacity of this rectangle. So let us now see what the lower sums look like as n ranges from 1 to 50. You see that if you have lesser number of rectangles, the area under the, we get a very poor approximation of the area under the curve. But as you go on increasing the number of rectangles, the approximation gets better and better. The white spaces get filled up more and more. And by the time we come to 50, we can almost, we've almost covered the area under the curve. Right. Now I bring this n back to position 1. And now I'm going to define the upper sum just the way I define the lower sum. So I'll say upper sum is equal to use the upper sum command. And in the same way, I'm going to look at the upper sum of f as x ranges from a to b, comma n. And notice that a rectangle has popped up behind, but this the area of this rectangle is much beyond the area under the curve. And if I want, I can change the color, though that doesn't help much, but maybe I can change it into a light blue shade or a purple shade with a slightly increased opacity. But I do want to get to see both the upper sum and the lower sum. I'm also going to untick the show label option. So the magenta portion represents the lower sum and the purple portion represents the upper sum. And look what happens as I drag n. You can clearly see the upper sum approaching the curve from above the curve and the lower sum approaching the curve from below the curve and both approximating the area under the curve. When n becomes 50, notice that the lower sum value is 5.84 units, square units and the upper sum is 6.16 so there is a difference between the lower and the upper sum. Now let me right click on the slider n and increase the number of rectangles to 200. So now instead of 50, I'll have 200 rectangles approximating the area under the curve for both the upper sum and the lower sum. And as I increase n, now you will see that by the time I reach 200, I can practically not make out the difference between the lower and the upper sum. And the differences in the values is much lesser now. And so in the limit, we can say that the area under the curve of this function between minus 1 to 2 is going to be an approximation given by the lower sum or the upper sum. And this these the lower sum and the upper sum are going to get closer and closer to each other as we increase the number of rectangles. So this uh, gives us a, will give the students a very nice way to visualize the meaning of the lower and the upper sum, although we may ask them to compute the value of this limit of sum algebraically. However, this applet will really help to visualize what is really happening. I do hope you found this video useful and do send your feedback. Thank you very much.